Great. So this morning, we're going to walk through um, setting up our branding and our marketing profile. As I'm going through the training this morning, please interrupt me with any questions that you have. This training is all for you. So um, you can unmute yourself or you can ask in the chat box. I also stop periodically as we go through the training um, to see if you guys have any questions or if there's anything that I can clarify for you. So the first thing we're going to do this morning is set up our marketing profile. Our marketing profile is really important because this is where command is going to get all the information about me as an agent to pull in across all the various different applets in the system. So we're talking headshots, logos, bio, all of that information. So in that way, as I'm creating pieces of marketing material or I'm creating web pages, I don't have to every single time upload a new headshot or write new bio. It'll all be there and I can just um, uh, add that in there automatically seamlessly. <clears throat> to update your marketing profile, up in the top right-hand corner of command where you see your name, we'll click on that, that drop-down menu. And then I will click on settings. And then over on the left, I'm gonna click on connect settings and then marketing profile. So with everything in command, I always recommend we start at the top and we'll just kind of work our way down, filling in the information as we go along. You'll notice over here in the top left-hand corner, it says use my information to brand my agent site. You wanna turn this toggle on so that it's green this is very important because this is what's going to give permission to command to use this information to pull in directly to when you build your agent website. So that way you don't have to add your headshot or your logos or anything multiple times. So make sure that this is turned on. Otherwise, your website won't actually be able to load properly. Below here, it's going to ask for my photo. So this is my headshot. You also notice that it recommended size of 360 by 360. How the uh, image is rendered here in a circle is how most often my, he my headshot will appear in um, across command in all the various applets. Um, so you wanna make sure that you do have a square image. You can use command if you don't have a square image to make that 360 by 360 uh, image. Or you can use Canva. We can walk through that in just a few minutes when we get into the um, branding side of things. <clears throat> uh, then we'll, below that, we'll use, um, we'll have our team logo. So this is your own personal business logo. If you don't have a personal business, if you just market yourself as an agent, a solo agent, and everything is KW First Atlanta, I would recommend just using a KW First Atlanta or just a KW um, general uh, uh, logo here. Otherwise, it will show up as a blank or missing piece of information, but you do want to have something here. And again, this we want the size to be 360 by 360, so that way it renders properly in the circle. Below there, we're continuing to scroll down. We're going to fill in or update any of the information here um, as we need to. So first name, last name, license number, it's really helpful that anytime you can include your license number, go ahead and do it. That's just one more piece of information that Greg will have if they ever review your website or any of your marketing material that lets them know that you are um, abiding by the rules. Here for team, I have Nicholas Core Real Estate Group. So this is how I kind of market myself and the team that I have set up. So that way I can um, have the team environment within command. Again, if you don't have a team, you can leave this blank or put realtor at Keller Williams First Atlanta. Professional job title down here, realtor, credentials, realtor. Below here, this is a new addition. So if you haven't updated your marketing profile before or in a long time, military affiliation. So we can select from this uh, drop down here if you are um, have any military affiliation. So whether you yourself are active military veteran or you have or you are a military spouse you can include that here that just lets uh keller williams as well as um the other agents across our company know um, of that military affiliation so you can get the credit there that you make 
Scrolling down, we have our bio. And this bio you can have as long as you want. Mine is just really simple, it's one sentence. Um, again, this is so that way it'll pull in consistent, cohesively across all the different applets in the system. You can have as long or short of a bio that you want. I would recommend for this bio that you do keep this relatively short. If you have a longer bio that's you know maybe a page long, keep that and we can still use it when we create our uh, agent website. But for here, I would recommend just keeping this pretty short because this is what's gonna be used across multiple applets and across multiple systems, that the shorter it is, the better it's going to um, fit and work across the different applets. Scrolling down, we have our phone number, our mobile phone office number, fax number. I'm just gonna go ahead and add in uh, the office fax number since that's, if I ever receive a fax, that's where it would be. Uh, and then my email and website. You'll notice that only a couple of these fields are required with the red asterisks, but the more information you can fill in, the better. Again, it's just going to help that if you have the office phone number and, the, and your fax number to be GRET compliant. Scrolling down, now we'll get into the brokerage market center information. So over here, we will have our um, KW First Atlanta logo. Again, we want this to be in a recommended size of 360 by 360. If you do not have the Keller Williams First Atlanta logos, Scott Hardy has uploaded all of the logos and a bunch of different options uh, to Rawls Group Help Desk. So I'll show you that right now. So if you open up a new browser, you can go to rawlsgrouphelpdesk.com. And then up here in the top right-hand corner, he has the downloads and I'll click on Market Center Logos. And then you can click on the first Atlanta logo here or on this link right here to a zip drive. And this is going to have um, numerous different formats of the logos. We'll have different color options, different background options. So go ahead and download that on your computer so that way you can use it for your marketing profile. You can also use it across any other pieces of marketing that you may need. Um, just, it's helpful to go ahead and have this, but you can get this here at rawlsgrouphelpdesk.com. And then we'll want to uh, fill in the rest of the information over here. Uh, Market Center, First Atlanta, also Sandy Springs. So I have First Atlanta dash Sandy Springs because sometimes it's uh, called one versus the other. Then we have our office phone number, our address here, and then our Market Center, and then our license brokerage number. So again, this is going to be more information that can appear on your website to ensure that your website is GREC compliant and that um, any visitor or consumer that goes to your website understands that you are an agent and is clearly understands that you are an agent with KW First Atlanta. Below here, we have our compliance section. So in the state of Georgia, we are not legally required to put anything um, on, the, on the footers of our websites. How, however, it is helpful to do that at times just to again clarify uh, for consumers visiting your website. I've just added here, Nicholas Core, Realtor with Keller Williams First Atlanta. For your GREC, for your GREC compliant websites, um, which is where most of the marketing information is going to be used, you need to have a one-to-one -one of your name to the Keller Williams First Atlanta name. So having this here in my footer is just one more opportunity that I can have that one-to-one -one message and clarify for consumers that I'm a, an agent with the First Atlanta brokerage. You can put anything else there if you wanted to, um, anything you see fit. I know that some states do require specific, specific language uh, in their footers. Below here, we have legal footer links. So if you wanted to add a link maybe to um, a fair housing website or the Georgia Real Estate Commission website or the Atlanta Board of Realtors, you can do that. You can click add another link and then you can just add your uh, the link title and the URL here. So that way you can, again, share more information and be more of a, uh, a source of clarification for consumers visiting your website. You can also add footer images. So if you wanted to upload uh, maybe the Realtor logo or the Fair Housing logo, uh, the Georgia Association of Realtors logo, any of those uh, logos, you can upload those here and they recommend a size of 128 by 48. You can add as many as you would like. 
Scrolling down, we have our optional social fields. So if you use social media as a part of your marketing, uh, you can see here I have a Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. You also have the ability to add a Twitter or YouTube channel. The benefit of going ahead and adding your social media channels here, and this is going to be the social media channels that you use for business, if you use your personal Facebook page for business or your personal LinkedIn, that's fine. Uh, but just make sure that the, the profiles that you link to here are ones that actually um, include business content or that you would want people to go to to learn more about your business. But the benefit of using um, or of having the links here is that when you go through and you're creating um, your website or various marketing um, information, this, this URL will just pull in automatically so that way you don't have to type every single time linkedin.com forward slash, you know, it just makes it a lot simpler. And then below here, we have our Google Analytics ID. So if you are a big Google Analytics user um, and you have a tracking ID, you can include that tracking ID here. This is going to be for someone that's really advanced in using uh, paid advertising, especially if you're using paid search. It just kind of helps track um, consumers as they visit your website uh, and then they add their search behavior and then where they go across the web. So you can kind of track who's visiting your websites. If you're not doing a lot of paid advertising, you don't need it. So don't stress about it. But if you do have it, here's where you can put that in there. So that way you can get the tracking across all of your KW uh, agent websites. So when you're done here, click save. And it will let us know your marketing profile was successfully saved. Any questions about the marketing profile, updating any of the information, getting the logos before we jump into um, updating our branding information? When uh, you use the HTTPS, do you have to use it or no? Or I can't remember which one didn't show up. For which um, which you are putting you're putting uh, the um, the Keller Williams our website on different formats for somebody to search like Instagram or something. So you can just use I think you can just use HTTP. Um, you don't have to use the S uh, for your agent website. Okay. Um, could you go over the recommended potential logos we might want to use? Yeah. Um, so for the, the, the office logos or the um, legal footer images? Legal footer images. So this may be something um, like the realtor logo, mm -hmm. the fair housing logo, um, the Atlanta Board of Realtors logo, anything, um, any designations that you have if you've gone through um, to become like a buyer specialist or a green, uh, green energy listing agent or any of that, you can add those logos there as well. Okay, does Nomer have the logo or is that the realtor one? I think it would just be, that would just be the realtor one. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions before we jump into our branding information? All right. So now what I want to do, since we have our marketing profile set up, and this is just one part of what's going to help our marketing across the entire platform, the next is setting up our branding and designs. And this, is, again, is just going to make sure that every single time we go to create something, we have that consistent uh, and cohesive marketing personality. So to do that, I'm going to go into designs. So I'm going to click over here in the designs applet, the third from the bottom. And then to get started doing this, I need to get into the designs editor. So I'm gonna create a design. It doesn't matter what, whatever you're gonna do. I'm just gonna select social for today, it doesn't matter. And then click continue. Give this a second to load. Now it's gonna take you here to all the different templates that you have available to you in designs, which is great. Um, I do a separate training on creating marketing material, both print and digital. But today, we're not going to go through this. Up here at the top, we want to click on the Assets tab. And this is where we'll be able to set up our branding information so that way it is the same across every piece of marketing material. 
So here you can see on the left-hand side, we have this menu of colors, images, text, logos, elements, videos, and files. We can go ahead and very similar, similarly to what we did in the marketing profile, we can do that same thing for our brand's visual identity. So in that way, the same colors, fonts, everything will be used um, across all of our marketing material, whether it's something that I created in command or maybe a third party created um, on my behalf. So we'll go through each one of these items here in the menu. So the first one's gonna be your colors and fonts. So we'll start here with colors. You can create separate color palettes. So I have a few here that are just from trainings and to create a new one, I'm gonna click on new color palettes. I'm gonna give this a name, let's rename this and I'm gonna name this, let's do uh, take command training 1025. And then we have six different color options up here that we can add. So I'm gonna click on the plus sign so I can add a new color. It's gonna give me all these different options over here. I can play with the different colors on this um, scroll bar here and kind of move it around uh, over here, up here in the image or the different color options. And it's gonna show me the different RGB numbers at the bottom. However, I will say, unless, if you have a specific brand color, you probably won't be selecting it this way. You'll want to put in the specific RGB number or down here in the bottom right hand corner, we have this little uh, arrows up and down that we can toggle through. And this gives us different options for how we can include our colors. I would say nine times out of 10, you'll have a hex ID number. So you can see here's this unique ID for this specific color that I just randomly selected. So here you can just delete all that information. Uh, and then type in whichever color code you want. So B40101 is Keller Williams Red. So I can just click that and then click Add. And now I've been able to add that Keller Williams Red. Hey, if, Nick, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. How did you get here again? So I went to Designs. And then within the Designs applet in the top right-hand corner, I click on Create Design. And then I just selected social because it, we just have to be able to get into the, the web editor. And then once I got into there, it's going to default you into the templates tab, but I clicked over here to the assets tab. Thank you. You're welcome. So you can go through here and add as many different colors as you want. Um, let's see if that, is that a color? Oh, it just goes to black. Uh, but yeah, you can just go through here, add a bunch of different colors that you want. Let's do, let's do blue. That's a little purple. Here we go. We'll just leave that blue. So now I have this new color palette that I just created for today. So then when I'm going in and creating marketing material in just a few moments, and we'll walk through uh, how this shows up. Uh, there I have it. I don't have to worry. And every single time I want to update a, a color or a background color, I don't have to type in that code. I can just pull it from the drop down menu. Below that, we have our fonts. So you can see here are a couple that I've added just from previous trainings. If you have a specific font, you can actually upload that directly from your computer. So if you've worked with a marketing company and they're like, hey, this is your font, you want to use this on all of your marketing, you can go ahead and you can upload that file. You can do that up here. You can click upload. And then you can upload one of these different file formats. And usually it's going to have a bunch of different options in there, a couple of different, op different files within that uh, font folder. But Command has also gone through and they've added a ton of very commonly used fonts that you could see if you can select uh, one of these fonts from this list without having to upload it. So here's a very long list of fonts. see any that are like, oh, hey, this is, this is my font. So if you're like, oh, I want to use Yellowtail, just select that toggle to green and you're good to go. See if there's one more. Let's Wouldn't do- Wouldn't it be great if they were alphabetical? Yeah, so you do have the ability to search. So if there is a specific one that you want to search for, uh, let's see. you could, search, I don't have, I don't know of a specific font to search for, but you could um, just search for one to see if they have the one that you need. So let's add this JS math one. 
So I'll click that toggle. So now I should be adding new fonts. I'm going to click add. And here are the two new fonts that I've just added into my assets. So that way, when I go to create marketing material, I'll have be able to use that same yellowtail font across everything. Once we have our colors and fonts selected, we can come into images. And then you'll see here, I have three different versions of my headshot. Um, you can have as many different versions of a headshot that you want or any other images um, that you may want to include. There is a separate logos and elements section over here. So don't upload your logo here or the first Atlanta logo. This would be any image that you probably wanted to use like a headshot or um, anything else that you'd want to include on a piece of marketing material outside of a logo. I have different options. So this one's a little bit more square. Uh, I think I've played around with these. Um, have as many as you want. Just come over here and you can click upload. And then you can uh, upload from your computer or any one of these uh, different options here. So you can pull it directly from Google Drive or from Facebook. Below images, we have text. And text is going to be any piece of text information that you are likely going to use multiple times across marketing material. And it's just to help streamline that so that way you don't have to write it out every single time. Most of this information is gonna be pulled in directly from your marketing profile. So if you filled that out and you've included your, um, your, UR, your URL and uh, the office information and address and phone number and your bio, that'll pull in over here. So you can see here's all these other pieces of uh, information that I have. So it just makes it really simpler, really simple when I go to create a piece of marketing material. So I'm going to click on add new field so I can add a new one. It's going to give me a whole list of different options. Now, the reason it's going to categorize them or give me an option of what type of field this is, is because when I go to add a field to a piece of marketing, I can just select, oh, LinkedIn, and that way it'll just go ahead and add that specific LinkedIn URL or it'll add the, job, add the job title or about me or whatever. I also have a, an, a new text option at the bottom. So if there's something that, uh, that you wanna add that isn't necessarily categorized and one of the different options previously laid out here in this scroll bar, you can click new text, give this a label and I'll just name this training 1025. And I guess what I will sell your home quickly and save. And now it's added that piece of text and that text field here. And you can add as many as you want. You can go through, you can edit them. So this is from a previous slate training. I can edit, duplicate, or delete. I can just delete that. I can go here to my Instagram profile. And if I need to edit that, let's say my, I changed my URL. I have a new Instagram that I created just for a business. I could update that here as well. Below text, we have logos. And here I've uploaded a handful of different versions of our Kelly Williams First Atlanta logo, as well as my own personal branded logo. So you can see here, I have the all white version of the First Atlanta logo, the KW red with the white text. And then I have the traditional uh, red with gray text here. You'll notice that all these background, all these logos have um, transparent backgrounds, so there's no white background. I would recommend that when you are uploading logos that you use a transparent background, and that file is going to be a .png file. So when you go through that zip drive that you downloaded from Scott Hardy on RawlsGroupHelpDesk.com, be sure to upload the .png option there. And that way, that's just a personal preference of mine. Uh, so that way, when, when I am creating pieces of marketing, uh, it doesn't have a white logo. It just looks a little bit more professional, a little bit more clean, in my opinion. Um, but you can, they do have the logos included, do have a white background, if that is what you like. But the reason you want to have the different color options here is because on some, let's say if I have a picture of a listing uh, that's dark, this white logo may pop better than uh, this gray version here. So that way I have options that I can quickly choose uh, and edit really quickly. The next option we have are elements. 
And this is going to be any, uh, any secondary or tertiary branding elements that you want to include uh, or uh, imagery. I don't personally have any, so I haven't uploaded, but um, if you have anything that you want to include here, you can upload uh, and have that. And again, this way you can just quickly add it whenever you're creating that piece of marketing material and don't have to upload it every single time. Next, we have videos. So we do have the ability to create videos in command, um, little like market snap updates. Um, not a ton of extensive video capabilities, but we are able to. So if you want to create um, maybe like a little intro or outro uh, that you want to use for your videos, you can upload those here. And that way you can easily add that to a video that you create in command. At the top, you can just come up here to uh, add video and then you can upload or pull it from YouTube. And if you have a ton of them, you can create different folders. So that way you can organize them uh, as need be. And then our last option is files. So this is going to be kind of any miscellaneous files that you want to upload into command that you can have access to uh, if and when you need it. Uh, this is, again, with all of these, but this especially is if you're maybe not using your normal everyday computer and you're having to maybe get on a computer at the library or somewhere else, uh, you can already have all of those assets uploaded into command so you can create that piece of marketing material or up, update it. Uh, from that random computer where you don't have all of your files saved. Everything's already there. Any questions, comments about um, going through and updating our branding information in designs? All right. Well, if there aren't any questions, I want to have the um, color code. So go, go ahead, Cecilia. There's a simple one. Um, you mentioned the KW red code. Do you have a black code for KW? Uh, no, but I think it's just, just regular black. I think, and black, I think it's just like okay. zero, zero, zero. But okay, thanks. You're welcome. Were there, was there a code for the KW red that you could share again? Yeah, it is, and I can, I'll type it in the um, box. It is. Because I know you had a like a five digit number, but there's a RGB number sequence as well. Yeah, I think it is. Let me come over here, double check this. Ah, uh, you had to get over to hex. Yeah, hex. So B40101. Oh, B. B4. Got it. There you go. And I just got, um, I Googled Keller Williams Red hex code. And it took me to, um, I think, KWU, and I had a whole list of different hex codes for KW colors, if you want to go through and get those. The last thing I want to show you really quickly is how you can edit a logo or a headshot to get that 360 by 360 square image and how to do that in designs. So I'm going to come over here to my designs. And then I'm going to uh, come up here from start from blank and select a format and start designing. So I'm going to click start. Give us a second to load. Now it's going to show me all these other custom sizes uh, for templates that are already made, but I'm going to click on custom size and I'm going to create one that is 360 by 360. And I'm going to leave this in pixels and click create. Hey, Nick, where do you uh, hit for custom designs? So yeah, I'll come back over here. Let me back i'll show you real quickly so um in my designs right here click start and then we'll select custom size right here awesome and then we'll select 360 by 360 and we will leave that as pixels and now, will that stay hold for, like, say, for instance, if we were using Michael Lewis Marketing Suite, will that transform to that as well or only in command? Uh, well, so those are two separate systems, so I don't really understand the question. Um, if What you would have to do is you'd have to create your 360 by 360 image here, and then you could pull in um, like a JPEG or something that you have already created from Michael Lewis. I don't know if that's, yeah. that's 
yeah, that's basically why I'm sure I was how I'm trying to figure it out. Cause I typically, I'm like Michael, I'd, I'd use Canva and then wow. I take it and transform into Michael Lewis, but I find myself five, 10 minutes trying to play around with the pixels to make sure I get it right. But if I'm able to actually create it inside a command and custom pixels automatically, like you say, I could just, you know, pull it into Michael, uh, Mark and Lewis, Lewis suite. So, yeah, that is, yeah. I, whichever one works best. So for here, let's say I want to create, um, my Keller Williams first Atlanta logo in that 360 by 360 image. I'll come over here to logos, go to assets. And I've already uploaded this. So let's just click on that logo. Now, Let's see, quick question. Uh, doo, doo, doo. I'm gonna pull this so it can be kind of as wide as possible here. Now remember, this is going to be rendered in a circle. Now what you can do here is you can use these uh, alignment lines to make sure that we have it dead center, but we also wanna make sure that it will load properly. So what you can do is over this, I can come over here to is it elements. There should be one for shapes. Let's come over here to uh, they've made a ton of updates to this, so now it is. Let's do circle. These are all like fancy circles. Okay. Here we go. So I can just add in this circle and I'll just drag this to fit the entire shape of my circle. Oh, sorry, of the square of the 360 by 360. And then what I wanna do is I wanna uh, right mouse click on this and then layer order and I'm gonna send this backwards. So now I can see my Keller Williams logo on top of it. So this is going to be how my KW logo will show in the circled environment and everything looks good, nothing gets cut off. So I can just delete that circle and I can come over here, I'll just name this KWFA logo 1025 and I can download. It's gonna give me a couple different options. I can, let's do download PNG, JPEG. So if you wanna do the transparent background, you'd wanna do the PNG transparent background, and then download. Let's give this a second, I'll start downloading. There we go. So now I have my transparent background in that 360 by 360 uh, size. I can do the same thing for a headshot. And then when I'm done, I click done. And then I can come back over here to my marketing profile. So my name, settings, Connect settings, marketing profile, and I can scroll down to here and I can upload that new logo that I just created. And there we go. And that is how you can get a 360 by 360 image of the first Atlanta logo. What questions do you have for updating your marketing profile and branding and command? What can I clarify for you? Um, anything else that I can show you that we didn't go over this morning that you thought we might have? All right, well, if there aren't any questions, I'll let you guys go. This is- uh, I, I have a question. Yeah. Will this be will this video be available if we missed any part of it um, in YouTube or something? Yeah, I'll be uploading it to YouTube by the end of the day. All right, great. Thank you. You're welcome. And as always, as you guys are working in command, um, don't hesitate to reach out. You can always call or text me and we can also set up some one on one time if you'd want to go through anything um, in more detail. You know, there's a link in my uh, email sub or my email uh, signature for Calendly, and we can set up some time there. Hey, Nick, this is Michael. If you got any pro tips on how to sift through all of those fonts since the
the fonts are not written in their font? So I, I would really only recommend adding those additional fonts if they're fonts that you need. So I, I would imagine it'd be someone that you're specifically, hey, for the Michael Bunch Realty Group. Gotcha. This is, uh, we know that we use this exact font then search for it that way. I wouldn't just start adding fonts and hoping they look good. Perfect, okay. All right, well, if there aren't any other questions, have a great rest of your morning, a wonderful Monday, and I will speak with you all soon. All right, thanks, Nick. Thank you.